Today we're going to be talking about the Virtual Production Field Guide version 2 and also taking a look at my new in-game book system. Hello and welcome to the fourth episode of Citizen Meta 1. So if you've never heard of the Virtual Production Field Guide, it's essentially a collection of articles and interviews about virtual production, everything from motion capture to green screen, camera tracking, LED volumes, you name it. There's some really great articles from industry professionals and for some reason I was included in this second edition. So shout out to everyone involved, Noah Kadner and Miles for including me. And so I thought in this video, I would show off my new PDF system that I can basically take any images or PDFs and turn them into this 3D book as a kind of cool presentation tool. So I'm gonna be talking about my section that you can see here. Now we don't have enough resolution to actually be able to read it on screen, which is too bad. So I'll have to do some traditional editing probably to make this legible. But anyway, I thought this would be a good opportunity to show the different types of presentation tools that I'm trying to build. So the section of the field guide that I'm featured in is called chapter three, additional applications and opportunities. And uh, I'm featured as an Unreal Engine developer, which I am, I developed Cinetracer and it talks a little bit about my background uh, as a cinematographer. I mostly worked in commercials and music videos, but the important part that's the most relevant is here where we talk about Unreal Engine for indie developers using it for virtual production. I feel like I'm reading a children's book here. So the first question asks, what are some of the key developments in Unreal Engine for the indie developer world? And I go on to talk about how the core fundamental technology, in my opinion anyway, that enables this kind of stuff is the HTC Vive and the Valve Steam VR ecosystem. And that's actually exactly what's powering my MetaHuman puppeting system, our Vive trackers, index controllers, and just the mass adoption relative to professional camera tracking equipment of basically tracking equipment. VR equipment, especially with the base stations, etc., is very, very similar to what you would be seeing uh, on set with like a Vicon or off the track system we get a consumer version of that when we use Steam VR equipment. That is what's allowing a lot of indie people to get into mocap, into camera tracking for green screen and for LED walls. You'd be surprised how many LED walls are powered by a Vive controller or a Vive tracker. It's kind of incredible. Uh, the second thing I point out is that Blackmagic Design has made the Ursa Mini Pro series of cameras. Those have SDI and those work extremely well for this ecosystem with SDI out and just generally being a really solid company when it comes to video IO and time code and whatnot. And they also make the capture cards. They're a key component on making uh, indie and affordable, but professional uh, cinema cameras for the industry. So those two things combined have really allowed this to kind of uh, take off. The last thing I talk about is the Zeiss extended data, which is kind of like the beginning or not the beginning, but it's a, it's a standard for the cinema lens industry to be able to communicate all this data back and forth from the lens to the computer and back and forth in real time. Broadcast lenses have been doing this for a long time, but cinema lenses, uh, it's still fairly new. There's been Cook Eye and other protocols, but they haven't had really enough data. Zeiss is extended is where it's starting to really all come together, in my opinion anyway, from my indie opinion here. Uh, the second question talks about what about on the software side? And obviously Unreal Engine is the main driver, being able to render things in real time at really high quality. Well, that opens up a lot of opportunities for me as a developer making Cinetracer and also for anyone using Unreal Engine to render your 3D worlds for green screen or LED walls. That's obviously one of the major ones right there. And I call out in 4.20, they got a new bokeh system that made everything look incredible and very photographic, you know, look like a physical pho uh, photography uh, system. And uh, in 4.25 with the ray tracing and the lighting and Unreal Engine 5 in the distance, the lighting accuracy is getting much, much better. So that's the software basically. Um, how has the need for remote collaboration affected your work? 
Well, I was already a software developer for the most part, but I was doing a bit of on-set work here, uh, just a bit, and that all completely went away uh, as soon as the quarantine happened. So I started to very well publicly experiment with doing virtual production work remotely, and I've made videos about that in the past and uh, kind of talk about how the uh, IA uh, 800, the art department guild, and I started to work together a little bit. So we have uh, the art department doing previs, which I did a project with them. And then we have hopefully soon starting to get the camera department and the lighting department in on that previs as well. And I think that that's something that I have been trying to get done in the film industry for a very long time is be able to get pre-production paid for, hopefully, uh, long term, and something that people can do, again, remotely. You can do really intense and very detailed uh, previs and planning, which you really need to do in a lot of virtual production cases, and have that be something that uh, DPs, gaffers, and people that wouldn't normally get paid for pre-production, that's what I kind of see about remote collaboration uh, enabling and having a standard in the industry like Unreal Engine so that we could all be working with the same formats. Uh, I'm gonna skip the next question and we're gonna go to the next page here. Uh, what are your biggest challenges as an Unreal Engine developer? So this is really from a developer side, maybe not so much for virtual production, but what I basically say is that Unreal Engine is updating so incredibly fast that it's really challenging as a developer to stay on top of all the new features. And I talked to other developers about this in that you basically can't master like everything in Unreal Engine. You really have to choose what it is you wanna get good at and focus on that. So for me, it was three years of nonstop, almost every single day building Cinetracer, which is, I would say is like a, you know, a rapid prototyping tool that's for the film industry. That's what I was working on. And uh, then I took about a year to work on virtual production camera systems like camera tracking and motion tracking. And then I brought that stuff back to Cinetracer. And then clearly now, if you're watching this, I have chosen as a developer to really focus on metahumans and control rig and being able to do live puppeting of virtual humans. Clearly that's what I'm working on. And I'm gonna be bringing that tech that I learn into Cinetracer as well. But it is challenging to pick what system you want to work on. It could be the landscape system. It could be the new audio system, chaos physics, Niagara, it just goes on forever. And that's one of the challenging parts is staying up to date with that. And sometimes it requires specific hardware for ray tracing as well. And just nonstop R&D uh, for us developers. I also shout out the Facebook group that I run. It's called uh, Unreal Engine Virtual Production big community of uh, developers and users there. So go check that out. I'm going to put this book down. Boom, lovely. Like the physics, landed right on it, flip cup style. So for someone getting started in virtual production, I really recommend getting into VR and specifically the Vive ecosystem. Again, it's gonna give you the ability to track cameras and then eventually be able to work with a mocap system like this. And all of that happens directly in Unreal Engine and you don't really need a third party uh, solution for hardware or for, well, I guess it's third-party hardware, but if you use Vive hardware with base stations, you get to basically work right in the engine and you don't have to deal with other third-party software. And I think that's really important in the beginning is to try to keep everything in Unreal Engine. It makes your iteration time faster and your learning faster. So you can get the camera tracking and motion capture. And then just generally, again, if you're a beginner, just getting into Unreal Engine and learn how to make scenes, right? Bring in, see, bring in assets, light it, just learn the ecosystem in general. But if you wanna get into like the virtual production part, a lot of that deals with live tracking. And again, Steam VR, Vive trackers, Vive controllers, index controllers, that's really the ticket to getting started in all of this. How do you see virtual production evolving over the next few years? Can I pull out another version of the book? Yeah, I just like looking at this. I guess I'll switch it to that picture because the other ones are really just illegible text. And this one this has a picture of me from a long time ago. But um, so yeah, how do you see virtual production evolving over the next few years? Uh, I say that I'm personally working on Cinetracer, which is basically me learning Unreal Engine virtual production and then trying to package it in a simple, fast video game way and then bring that to filmmakers who may not have the time to learn Unreal Engine right now or don't have any 3D background. 
And my hope is that people who, again, have no, are non-3D, like they're full production people, that they can get started in CineTracer and then eventually move on to Unreal Engine if they want to. Um, but I think it's important for the industry, for students and people who are new, like deciding like, do I want to work in 3D or virtual production or just film production? I think it's really important to have a nice accessible version of virtual production and like my first FMX presentation, first and only FMX presentation was called CineTracer is Virtual Production, the video game. And I really try to um, make that a reality. And once we have metahumans like this avatar right here in CineTracer, I think it's gonna be even more uh, closer to that vision. So that's really like my part in it. And um, for the broader industry, we're seeing virtual production adopted for many, many reasons. Uh, there are hundreds of LED wall virtual production studios. Uh, quite a bit, there have been for quite a while green screen based virtual production studios. And we're seeing it in every industry and guild and union. I think in the entire entertainment industry is adopting some form of virtual production uh, for various reasons. So we're gonna be seeing a whole lot of it. So that wraps it up for my section and my breakdown in the virtual production field guide. Again, this is the second edition. So I will link to the first edition and the second in the description below. So go check those out again. Shout out to Epic Games, Noah Kadner, Miles, and the whole team who put this together. Uh, David Marin as well. Let me know, what did you think about this book system? I put on Twitter that I was 3D modeling a book to make a PDF more tangible. But then I realized that this is kind of, without being too offensive, kind of a boomer millennial thing where like, I personally like books and PDFs are cool on my iPad, which is what I'm reading right now, but I still like having a book. So even in the virtual world, I thought it would be cool to have a virtual book. Do you think it's cool to have a virtual book? Would you want to be able to use virtual books and these kind of 3D tangible things in a metahuman presentation system? Well, I like building them, so they're gonna be in there, but I'm super interested in if you thought it was a useful uh, presentation tool and you're starting to get a feel, I think, or at least I am, of what type of presentation tools I want. I wanna be able to bring in like a bar graph or push away certain things or review hardware and pull it out. And so this is the very beginning of that system and really the sky's the limit in Unreal Engine. If I can think it, I can design it, program it, and make it uh, part of this presentation system. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Peace out.